Hi, I'm Natalie Murray. I'm a retired police officer and freelance forensic artist. This is me and this is my website here and this is my book that was published this year, Digital Forensic Art Techniques. Today I want to talk about drawing faces. Uh, the image that I'm going to use today is a uh, booking photo from smalltownnoir.com. I don't use contemporary booking photos because of privacy reasons and copyright reasons, so I thank Small Town Noir for allowing me to use their photo. So this is the photo I'm going to use. Even if you've drawn other things, when you start drawing faces, it can look really amateurish and you can be really discouraged if you haven't drawn one before until you understand the structure of what is underneath the face, it's difficult to make it look realistic. I did a webinar for Corel on two-dimensional reconstruction which shows the skeletal structure of the head and I did a tutorial for them on the muscular uh, structure of the head, the muscles of expression and mastication. So if you look at those, those give you an idea about what is underneath the skin of the face and that might help you to get some basic understanding of the structure of the head. But I can also show you some other ideas of, uh, of how to begin to understand how to draw a face. So if you want to get a photograph of a face, you can uh, go to Google and if you want to Google mugshots, that's a good location to get photographs where someone's looking at you straight on. If you uh, Google a mugshot and get something that is in color, like this photograph here, that I just pulled out of eyes. If you get a color mugshot that you really like but you have trouble understanding the midtones, what's light, what's dark, when you get to the midtones, you can see the shadows and you can see the brights, but you can come through to effects and go to tonal control and adjust colors and just take the saturation down all the way and that turns it black and white. Then you can also move the value to a little darker if you want to do that and make it a black and white photo that may help you to see the brights and darks a little bit better if you'd like to do that. So if you want to get a photograph from Google of a mugshot and bring it into Painter and use that as your base, as your starting picture to work with, uh, you need to make sure that the pixel count is a good one so that your uh, marks will come out clean and crisp. This photograph if you go to resize, you'll notice the resolution is 144 pixels per inch. That's not going to work out. I'll show you the difference in how that mark comes out. The eye on the left here was done at a 300 pixel per inch. The eye on the right is at 144 pixel per inch. You can see that's a lot more uh, rough and the eye at 300 is a lot sharper. So if I come in through here, go back to resize on the canvas and change that to 300 and zoom in. That'll make it a little bit easier for me to uh, draw a clear and crisp picture. Now when you're drawing on this photograph, you don't want to draw directly on the photograph. Then you can't turn it off and see your drawing without the photo. Does that make sense? So you need to make some layers on top of the photograph so that you can turn the photo off and see your drawing without the photo underneath it. So come up to layers and add a new layer. Now if you want to just draw directly on that, that's fine if you're drawing on there. But then to see your drawing without the photo, you have just a transparent background. That doesn't work either. So what I do is make a layer and then I fill that layer with white. And this is going to be uh, like a sheet of paper that's between my drawing and the photograph and then I come through and make a new layer and that'll be my drawing layer. So this photo, this layer, I can turn on and off to see the photograph or not as I wish to and this layer will be my drawing layer. But I add an additional layer underneath my drawing as well because when I do my drawing in a dark area, notice I'm drawing right here where it's dark in her hair, you can't see that. You can see it when I turn that layer off, but you can't see it when I'm drawing on it. That's no good for me. So I come through and add a second layer. Let's just duplicate this one. And I turn the first layer down to about 20%, somewhere in between 15 and 20%. 
and then when I turn this layer off I can still see this darkness. Can you see that? So I can see when I'm drawing in a dark area. That's what these two layers are for. So I have the first layer at 15 to 20 percent and the second layer I just turn on and off in order to see my drawing with or without the photograph. Okay? So let me erase that piece of drawing there. And we'll start again. Okay, so when I tell you to draw an eye, a lot of people will come through and take a look at this woman and say, okay, I'm going to draw an eye. Or a lot of beginning artists, and they'll come through and they'll do something like this. And then maybe they'll put in an eyelid. And they'll have some color in that eye and tidy it up a little bit perhaps. Get rid of that line in there. And they'll have an eye. And that is an eye, but that is not this eye. They're drawing what they think an eye looks like, but it isn't this eye. Every eye is different. And so you don't want to draw this eye. You want to draw her eye. Okay. And to learn to do that with Painter, you may as well learn to draw directly on her eye so that you can see all the variations on what is happening. And once you learn how to see those things, then you can do it on your own without drawing directly on top of it. So if you come through and think, okay, the eye is a ball and this ball is inside the head. Here's the ball. And it's round and it gets dark as it goes inside the head. So it's going to be shaded in there. It's going to be shaded in there. The eyelid is going to shade it as well. Here's the iris there, and here's the pupil there. And this eyelid wraps around the ball and protects it as it goes back into the head. And so as it comes back towards the skull, it's wrapping, so it's darker here. It's wrapping, so it's darker there. And then it comes forward here into the light, so it's lighter there. It overlaps the bottom eyelid. So the bottom eyelid is overlapped. And the bottom eyelid is also wrapping. It's a little darker through there. And then it wraps around the bottom of this ball. Think of what's going on. It's wrapping and protecting that ball that is inside the orbital cavity. And then the orbital cavity comes out, the skin comes out and wraps around the edge of the orbital cavity there. And that's inside the cavity. And then it comes out to where it raises out to the nasal spine there. So we have some tone on the iris there. But all those things are happening. So turn this on and take a look at what you have going on. I like to do a lot of blending. So I'll grab my blur tool and blend things out a bit. Zoom in, make that smaller. This is the point where it's ugliest. And turn your on off layer off. And I do it again. If you can't see where you want to draw, you're not sure if your lines are covering things up, you can turn it off. And make sure you put the lines in the right place. You can't see where you're drawing, but when you turn it back on, you'll see that you're lines are where they need to be. See where the eyebrow goes directly on top of the brow bone. See where the darkness is, where the shadows are. The upper eyelid is shading the eyeball. And you can actually see 
the depth of the lower eyelid. It's not just paper thin, it has depth, it has thickness. And you can see that on her. So put that in there. So just really quick. That's the eye. I think that's a little too square down on the bottom. So let me erase that out a bit through there. And bring it through. So with Painter, you can use this reference photo and trace over it to start with. And once you learn to see that eye properly, Then you can use it as a reference photo alongside you, not underneath your work, but alongside your work. So if you zoom out, there's basically an eye. Let's throw the other one in there. Okay. Okay two eyes. So moving on to her nose. The nose is three parts. It's not just one. We have the centerpiece and then we have two nostrils. And nostrils aren't just big round blobs. We've got a little opening here, a little opening there. I'm thinking of the nose as this center structure, which comes down here to a column. And then this nostril here and this nostril there. Look at the shading. It comes down here, comes down to the center, and it comes down here. It shades underneath there, shades up here, shades, hers shades over the ball of the nose, shades down onto the nostril again, down into here, shades down from the nasal spine, the center area of the spine, down onto the cheekbone. This is where the face, this is where the skin comes off of the nose down onto the center of the face. And then underneath, down into where it flares down to the mouth. The nose sets in to the face here, where it's darkest. So it's three parts, not one. Center part, two other parts off to the side. You can shade that out a little bit. There's your nose. Then coming down to the mouth, her mouth is open. But don't draw a, a line around the outside of the mouth. There isn't one. Her mouth has got an opening there. Um, you don't see teeth all the way across. You see a darkness back where the, the mouth is sort of horseshoe shaped, right? The teeth go back into the skull. So it gets dark back in there. You don't see a picket fence of teeth. Um, the teeth, you can maybe see little little breaks here and there, but don't draw big picket fences of teeth. You have a bit of fat here, a roundness of fat here, a roundness of fat there. The upper lip is darker than the lower lip because it's turning away from the light. And the lower lip is coming out and catching the light. See this catching the light right there. Comes all the way out there. Where it hits the light all through here. I 
Oh, this part is darker than the lower part. But there isn't a line around it. Don't draw a line around it. where the teeth, where the mouth meets there, back where the teeth are. Younger people often have a, a a fullness to the edge of their mouth through their, through their sides, like she does. And for the rest of the face, there's a darkness under the lower lip where it poofs out. Darkness through here. Come through there. Just get a quick, let me get a quick outline on the hair. Dark through there. Just to give us a head shape. There's a quick drawing of, uh, of the features of her face. Once you get that done, you can add a new layer and add some tone. We grab a lasso and go all the way around the face. Fill and say OK, select none. If you want to from there, you can turn the opacity down. But and start drawing in some darks. Why don't you preserve transparency so you don't go outside the edges. Put in the darks out here. You see some through there. Make it a little smaller. Through there, you see them through there. The base of the nose, top lip, some of the bottom lip, through the chin. Through the eyes. See some lights. there. Through there. Turn it back up. And after you do that, pop out your edges. Maybe work a little bit more on uh, some mid-range darks, not all one tone of dark, uh, very dark and medium dark and a lighter dark. Something in between through there, coming down from the nose, some more darkness through there and there. and turn it back up and see how that looks. And coming down through there. And then get the blend tool, blur tool, blur it back out. Just think of the structure and what is underneath. Make it a little smaller so it doesn't totally lose all the structure, the form. And back to real dark. A 
along the edge there. And her eyebrows are very dark too. And I haven't done her hair at all yet either, but that's kind of secondary to what the tutorial's about. Let's take that off so we can get that edge a little better. You can go back and forth, see what other lights and darks you can see on the face, bring it in or out a little bit more, but basically end up with a face that looks fairly realistic. Anyway, just keep working with it. One of the most important things uh, to be aware of is that there's a good range between the lights and the darks. If all your colors are kind of in the mid-tone range, then it's just going to look muddy, so try and get some real dark blacks in there and some fairly bright whites in there and it should come out pretty well. Painter can help you in using a reference photo underneath your photo so you can see the structures of the face and once you're comfortable with that then you can use it as a reference photo beside what you're working on instead of underneath it so you can learn to draw the face more realistically. I hope that's been helpful. Thanks for watching.